Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This quick tutorial is to show you very briefly how you can edit the photo and the text in a Canva template that you've received. In order to start using this template, all you have to do is click at the very bottom where it says use template. Now, one of the cool things about Canva is that you can edit templates pretty much anywhere. As you can see here, this opened up a, another tab in my browser so I can edit it right here. There is Canva apps for your desktops and mobile devices. So no matter what you're using, you should be able to conveniently edit a Canva template. The very first thing I want to change here to customize this design is the text. I'm going to click on the first text here. So now this text box here is highlighted with a purple box. And as I click that, you'll see that the menu bar across the top has changed. The very first thing I have here is the font selection. When I click that, I'll see the different fonts that are available. I can scroll through this list. In this list of fonts, you'll see that some of these fonts are included in the Canva free account, like this one here. And as I click these fonts, you'll see that that text changes in my design. Other fonts are only available in the pro account. You'll see those or you'll know those by the little gold crown circled here. Now, after I've decided on a font and there are a ton of fonts that I can use here, I can also choose to change the font size. So right next to that is the font size. I can hit the plus to increase that size or the minus to decrease that size. Next, we have the font color. If I wanted to change that from white to a different color like gold or blue, I have the option to do that here. Now, cool thing here is that at the very top here, you'll see document colors, and this will show you or have quick access to colors that are already used in your design. I have font styles. We have bold, italics, underline, strike through and uppercase doesn't really do anything for this text. But if I go down to where the text is upper and lowercase and I click that, we'll see that it goes from either all uppercase or upper and lowercase. Now, next up is alignment. Right now, you'll see that the selected text is center aligned. I can click that to change the alignment to the left. Justified. Align to the right or back to center. From here, we have list options such as dots, numbers or back to none. Up next, we have spacing. From here, we can adjust letter spacing in line spacing. What I recommend is before making any changes here, you take note of the value that's there. So we're at 24 right now. I can slide this to increase the letter spacing or the space in between each letter. Let's take that back to 24. There. Or line spacing. So the space in between each line, if I want to make that line spacing closer or farther apart. Let's take that back to 1.00 or just one. At the bottom is an option that I rarely use anchor text box. You can anchor your text box to the top, to the middle or the bottom. Lastly, we have effects inside effects. You can find special effects such as shadow lift outlines. You can also shape your text, like adding a curve. If you mess up something, you can always go up to the top where undo is located and click on undo to undo any changes you've made. And as you may already know, the text here is editable. So if I were to click inside here once, you'll see my cursor will appear. 
If I double click, it will select one word. And if I triple click, it selects all the text inside of a text box. From here, I can start typing one, two, three, four, five. Anywhere street. There. Now with most templates, as far as text goes, that's all you really need. Your main purpose is to change the text, maybe change the color of the text. You can also move around the text too. So right now this box is selected and my cursor is there. If I click off of that box, now it's not selected. I can now click it again and move it around. As you can see, if my cursor is in the box, moving around doesn't work. I have to click off the box, then select it again, and now I can move that text around. Awesome. Let's undo those couple moves. But that will really help you with spacing. Let's say I wanted to bring this down a little bit. Or if I had maybe three lines of text in here, I can use the move to either make the text smaller or bigger like this here. And I can just move this around. You can see that there is a snap to middle there. If I want it directly in the middle of this design, I'm going to drop it right there. The next thing you may want to do to your design is if you have a placeholder photo, you're going to want to change that. There's a couple things you can do with placeholder photos. You can either use a photo that's already in Canva. So if I go over here to the left here, click elements, I can search for a photo like wedding. Then go down to where it says photo here, see all. And similar to our fonts, you'll see that some of these are only available for Canva Pro but others are not. So this one here I can use because I'm not using a pro account to use it. I can simply click, drag that over and it's asking me or it's allowing me to choose which element that I want to replace with this photo. So you can see there's a few different elements in this, this here design. I can let it go. Bam. There. That's where I want this photo to appear. You also have uploads that allows you to upload your own photo directly into Canva to use in your design. To do that, you simply click uploads, click where it says upload files. This will open your computer or your mobile device. You can choose where that file is on your computer. It'll upload to Canva and then simply click and drag. Let's try it with this handsome fella right here. So I'm going to click, drag that there, let go. And voila, you've just changed the photo in your design. I'm going to undo that because that really doesn't fit this wedding theme here. Now, if you are happy with your design, that's all you really need to do. You want to be able to efficiently and quickly change your text and change your stock or your placeholder photo if needed. A couple other things that you may consider doing is modifying the elements of the design. So we can see here that these flowers are selectable. I can click and select these flowers, these designs here in the background. I can click and select these and I can move them around as I like. So this flower here, I can click it to select it. Then I can drag it to move it around in this design. Let's click this one, drag that one up as well. If I thought the design looked better th like that, I could. I can do that with each of these elements. I can resize them by grabbing the little white circle here at the end. Not necessarily saying that I'm making this design better, but I just want to show you how you can do that there. 
Now, let's see this design here. Let's bring that down a little bit so I can see it. You can also see that there's these two arrows pointing at each other in a circle. I can click and drag that to rotate this image a little bit. Kind of like what I'm doing there. Let's rotate it like that. Tuck that away back in this corner. Let's take a look at this one. We'll do a little bit of rotating here that way. Tuck that back in this corner here. There. We've just made some uh, some changes to our design here. Let's bring this down there. Bring that down there. You can feel that Canva likes to snap things to different elements here. That's where those purple dotted lines are coming to. It's snapping it to different parts of my design. Maybe I want this aligned to this to the top of this text. Maybe to the bottom of this text. Canva is helping me out with keeping this design symmetrical, just looking good, flowing nicely. Over here to the left, I can click elements again. And we're still on wedding, so we have our wedding photos here. I can click graphics and I can find some other elements that I can add to this design. Again, I have the crown here on some of them and some of them do not have the crown. Let's see if I wanted to add these cool little leaves to the design, I can just drag them over. And for this, I don't want to drag it to a placeholder or a photo. I want to drag it somewhere where something else isn't selected and let it go. And now I'll just add it this to my design. I kind of like how it looks in the background here. So with this design, let's see, let's leave it right there. I'm going to go over to position. Let's move this all the way to the back. So it's behind everything. And let's see, I want to do another something else a little unique here. Let's click where it says transparency. So this is how opaque or how see through this design, this leaf design is right now. It's at 100% opaque. So I can't see through it. I can drag it down. So as I drag the opacity down, you can see through it. You can see the color behind it. Let's drag that down to about 30. Cool. So I just added a new element to my design. I can drag these circles to make it bigger or smaller. And bam, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope this has helped you learn how to make changes to your design. The last thing I want to do to this design is save it so I could either print it from home or send it to a printer. To do that, I'll click where it says share. Click download. And now I can choose a file type. PNG is recommended. This is best for complex images. Now, if I was just sending this somewhere, I might choose PNG or JPEG. For this, it's important to know where you're sending it. If you're sending it to a printer, then you want to find out what's best for them. They may choose JPEG or they might choose PNG. If you're just sharing it online, on social media or emailing it, then JPEG is perfect. A lot of times for print, they might tell you your printer might tell you to select a PDF. I tend to print things as PDFs. Best bet, if you're not sure, I would stick with PDF, just like it's recommending here. After you choose that, you can choose to include crop or bleed marks. These are marks that printers will use to crop or cut out your designs, flatten the PDF, include notes, now, these two are important if this is going to be just digital. Next, you want to go ahead and click download and select where on your computer you want to download this file. After that, you're ready to either send it to your printer to print it out or send it to a print company and have that print company print it out for you. If you like quick tutorials like this, please make sure you like this video, share it and subscribe. I'll see you in the next tutorial.